Hello everybody and welcome back to SnowRunner once again. Still checking out the Phase 1 DLC. It's slowly rolling out, but we do have a couple vehicles. I do have the uh, the Tuz 16. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We're going to show you that. But the biggest one we're going to show you today is definitely my favorite, uh, the Ford F750. I did finally get that thing out. And I do want to show you what uh, you have here available to it. Engine-wise, we have a few to choose from here. Um, and uh, I've just chose the... Uh, the Het 6V uh, 50, and then uh, custom gearbox. You've got uh, a couple options with your suspension. I haven't found the suspension upgrade. I think it's. Uh, I'm pretty close to, to finding it though, because uh, uh, I just need to get some more watchtowers here on this map. Um, as far as chains and all that go, you can have whatever you want. I've got the 41s on there. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, I did buy an autonomous scout winch for it. Uh, frame add-ons. Here's the stuff you can do. You have a pickup bed custom pickup bed, uh, the small roof rack, uh, utility mount, uh, the flatbed, or the loading crane on this truck, which is really cool. I chose to go with the utility mount, small roof rack, and custom pickup bed. I pretty have pretty much have made this thing into a Mad Max vehicle. Um, snorkel, got that one on there, the tall front facing one. Um, and then we have engageable all-wheel drive, and then there's just real wheel drive when you first get it. So you definitely want to have all-wheel drive on this truck. Visuals wise, we have uh, outrolled flap cap or stock. Uh, I've got the outrolled look to it. Um, round beacon, chrome parking lights. Um, these are other things that you can have underneath there. And, and you can see which ones are going to turn off that uh, roof rack that you have there. But uh, you, you do have some options here. I do like the one that I already have in there, which is the factory parking lights uh, and the external horns because I like the uh, roof rack. Rooftop, you can get the old flasher bar. Check it out. Uh, very similar to what you can do on the Lodestar. Uh, the roof fog lights, uh, you can turn those on and off, but uh, we're not going to use them because I do like what I have set up here. Front bumper wise, you got the lattice, uh, the hunter, uh, the trap, tra trap zium, and then you've got stock. These are your options here. I went with the hunter because I'm trying to make this thing look ridiculous, um, and I think I have achieved it actually. You only get one set of rims with this truck, the F750 rims, uh, and then as far as two tone colors go, you got a brown. Uh, and white one, which is actually really cool. I like the blue and white. Uh, then you have a like a two-tone green. You got the uh, brown and orange. And then that is just, that looks like something out of Dirt 5 as far as the actual uh, color spectrum goes. Um, but I, I like the blue one for sure. So we can uh, now turn our beacons off, which is really cool. Uh, something I think I forgot to uh, talk about last time, but happy Monday to everybody. I hope you had a great weekend and your week is off to a great start. Um, there's a few things I did want to talk about regarding SnowRunner and what's going on with the DLC and uh, Phase 1. This is the Search and Recover. Um, I did not go over the fact that uh, they do have another map for Tamir, um, and that is Rift. Okay, we're already pretty much stuck in there. We can just go ahead and put that all-wheel drive on and drive right through it. Oh, I love this truck. It is so cool. Um, and apart from that, we, uh, you know, we're going to have more coming out with it. Uh, you have some interior things that they're going to give you. Uh, you have some new liveries. Um, so it, that is happening right now with Phase 1. And then we move on to Phase 2. And Phase 2 is going to be the Explore and Expand. And then Phase 3, Locate and Deliver. Uh, phase 4 is new expansion. Then they move into the High Roll Pack. Loaded Dice Vinyl Wrap. Uh, Scorch Vinyl Wrap. And True Colors Vinyl Wrap. So some vinyls uh, will be coming out before too long. Uh, but the biggest thing is... Uh, you know, having this new map. And uh, it's been pretty cool. We know we can fall through uh, the ice, which is a really new addition to um, to the SnowRunner series. Uh, it was the first thing I thought of whenever I was on the Alaska map. I was like, man, if only we could fall through the ice. And uh, they did deliver on that, didn't they? Yes, they did. So, interior-wise, check this thing out. It is absolutely beautiful, um, as you would expect. That's something that I really like about uh, snow runners that these vehicles interiors are incredible like you know I'm still gonna be the advocate to say I wish we didn't have any hands um, or the option to not have a driver and we just had the wheel um, it would make it a lot better in my opinion but alas here we are having some fun regardless so hope you all are doing well like I said um, I'm excited for uh, you know what's to come with this this as far as, let's talk about the uh, this thing first of all. So, getting this thing out of that, well, it's a frozen swamp essentially, 
um, took forever. I did it on a stream. Um, I think it took me it, about two and a half hours, I would say, uh, between two trucks, two different trucks to get it uh, where I needed to. I think I actually ended up using the Azov to get it out completely, um, but I had the Kolob to help me as well. And then when I first started driving, I was like, I, just, I, don't, I don't get the appeal other than the look of it. Like the look of this truck is just so cool, but I don't get the appeal of it um, as far as its functionality because I was kind of disappointed how uh, it drives. It's slow. Um, it, does, it doesn't burn too much gas. I was pretty impressed by that. Um, and you have the diff lock on at all times. So it is a long truck. It has that gap there between the, uh, the bed and the front, which I get the reason why they did that. They wanted us to uh, you know, be able to put a crane there and use this truck in a different way. Um, however, you don't expect to get anywhere anytime fast. I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and turn around and we're going to go get this watchtower here. I can't believe I did not get that one before, but I don't know where the other ones are located here. So we could kind of just explore this a little further. Um, if we come down here, I, don't, I haven't even been over here yet. All right. Moment of truth. F750. Let's see what you can do here. Can you get through this at least? That would be ideal, right? Uh, it's doing it. I mean, it's slow. But it gets it done. It does. Uh, there's those lights I was talking about in the front. I do like the look of that. Pretty darn cool, I must say. I'll shut those off for now. But yeah, I haven't been over here on this section of the map yet. Um, and I'm starting to get to the point where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm wanting to go. Okay. Well, there you go. We just drove through that. Um, <laughs> at the point where I want to uh, go back and get some more vehicles unlocked from Russia and all that. I haven't finished all that out yet, but I do plan to do it. I'm going to go ahead and just winch myself on out of this stuff here. Um, I do want you to listen to the engine sound of this thing because uh, it does have a great sound to it. At least you. There we go. And uh, here, I'll go ahead and hit the handbrake there and we'll uh, kill the engine and uh, listen to this thing fire up. Yes, pretty darn cool. We'll keep our beacons on. Why not? What do we got over here? I haven't checked it out. Um, cross over that. Oh, by the way, I did uh, get the new uh, map for, well, that came out like last month for the hunter called the wild. If that's something you want to see, um, I could check it out and it'd be something fun and different to do. Let's come around this corner here. And uh, what do we got? A power station of some sorts? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Not a whole lot here. And I'm not seeing any watchtowers over here that we're missing or anything. I don't know what this road uh, is all about, but we can go check it out. Oh, there's a watchtower up there on the left. But I think I have that one already, don't I? Pretty sure I do. Yeah, I already have that one, so not worried about that. But I do want to go check this out and see what this is all about. I've got it in low plus. We're trying to get this thing over this hump here. But you can see what I'm talking about. I mean, it's 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 a slow truck. It is. And I haven't tried it without uh, the chains yet. Um, if we had some actual mud tires, I'm sure that would help us out greatly. However, with the all wheel drive, I was expecting a little bit more out of this thing, but it is heavy. Uh, it is very sluggish and I don't know. We're, we're going to get up this hill. It's just going to take forever to do it crawling at a slug's pace, but it is doing the job if we have it down in low. And I was in auto. It didn't seem to uh, really like that too much. Although now we can get back into auto and get some speed since we're not going straight up a hill anymore. And check it out. We got a downed helicopter back here. That is cool. I have not seen this yet. And is it just here for show? I think it is. It's like an old hind or something. No, that's a uh, one of the, the MI7s, I believe. Yeah. Let's check out the Tuz 16 Actaeon. We got the engine in it right now, which is just a Elias 6 T60. Nothing huge there. I haven't gotten any updates for this thing yet or upgrades. Um, suspension wise, you know, haven't found that yet. Tires, you can, you know, do whatever you want with that. Uh, winch options are there. Spare wheel. Um, you can have a engageable diff lock. Uh, frame add-ons. This is something that's cool 
and makes it uh, very unique compared to the other trucks. And that is uh, the frame add-ons being a little bit different than what we have seen. They're very, uh, I don't know what you would say, but uh, they're, they're era based for the most part. Um, how old the uh, vehicle is itself. And then you have a roof rack option as well for the frame add-on. Snorkel wise, you have a couple snorkel options there. Um, visuals, you can do uh, double tall beacons, small parking lights, external horns, or the twin horn. That's what I've got there. Uh, rear bumper, we've got the steer, uh, stock wheel fenders. Um, I have those installed. Front bumper, I have the Hunter because I think it looks awesome. You have heavy duty, crossbar, uh, fog lights, and then stock. So I like the Hunter. It makes it look mean. Uh, and then rims, you have all those options to you like you would the other vehicles. As far as the coloring go, you know, the standards there, two tones, you've got um, this camo, you know, here. Uh, you've got a uh, gray and white camo, and then you've got some some green and white there, uh, and the, the various other ones. That one's a little bit more like a desert look. Pretty cool, though. Um, I'll show you what it's all about. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Has one of the weirdest horns, doesn't it? It really does. Um, you know what? Here, let's go ahead and just turn our beacons off on this guy. But it's a very, very capable truck. I do like it a lot, actually. We haven't even, you know, kicked on any all-wheel drive or anything like that. It's so light, it can just go about anywhere you want it to. So there's all-wheel drive, and you can see it's already starting to dig down in there a little bit. Um, but we can put it in low and then diff lock. And uh, I mean, it, it'll, it's a pretty capable little machine. It'll, uh, it'll do what you want it to do for sure. Uh, interior wise, you see, it kind of looks a lot like the, uh, like kind of like the con interior and stuff. Very interesting looking uh, vehicle. I do like it. Back to auto there and uh, watch. This thing is got a nice wheelbase on it because we drive right over this stuff. No problem without getting stuck. Uh, damaging the engine, you know how that goes. Oh, okay, damaging the engine again because we're stupid. And then we're going to get out here on the actual ice and check it out. Because uh, we can go all the way across to that lighthouse over there, which is really cool. And I'll show you where I found the upgrade for... Um, it was for the 750, the Ford 750. If you're looking for the all-wheel drive, I'll show you exactly where that's located if uh, you're new to it. So... You see this thing scoots pretty good across the ice. I have yet to fall into the ice with this thing yet, but I haven't pushed my luck too much. I think maybe that's why. Here's some drift in action. <laughs> this thing is so much fun to drive. I do like it a lot. So basically you find it whenever you are um, unlocking the Ford F750 for you. Uh, right before you get to the destination of bringing it back to that camp uh, is when you're going to see that. So it's just sitting there. You don't have to tow it back. Okay, I see it tries to fall through, but we had speed on our side there. Um, it's not something you have to tow back to a camp or anything like that. You can just straight up recover it right there. Kind of similar to how you did with the, uh, the Kodiak on the first map. All right, back this way. But I wanted to show you guys the new uh, the new vehicles. Um, what's really cool and different about this particular phase... Oh, my lord, we're blowing out our tires and stuff here. Oh, we're still doing it. Uh, is that you don't have to have... Okay, so say your, your buddy has the uh, season pass and they have this map and all that. If they're hosting a session, you can check it all out. You don't have to, uh, to own it yourself. So with this one... Um, as long as you play co-op, uh, you d you don't have to own the season pass for it, which is pretty cool. And uh, there's going to be more, you know, slowly rolling out with it. But uh, right here on the left, see that car broken down right here before you get to this lighthouse? Right there is where you're going to get the, uh, the upgrade for it, for the Ford F750. Now, as far as the raised suspension on it, I'm not really sure where that's going to be. So time will tell. Time will tell. Got some, uh, ooh, you can hear some ice crack in there, but as long as you keep the speed up in this thing, I've yet to fall through completely. I mean, I want to see if we can, you know, push our luck there a little bit. That's just straight up water on the right there. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> we're putting it through its paces today. It's a neat map, though. 
I do like this uh, this one so far, and I want to show you this way out here. You got a, uh, a destroyer or a battleship or something. It looks like a battleship. Could be a destroyer. Uh, stuck in the ice out there in the distance. It's like half down. But still, really cool. So we've seen some... Uh, some military vehicles and that's what this is all about and uh, I want to do some more of the actual missions on it and maybe I'll uh, you know do that with Zach or, or somebody uh, and check those out but coming all the way over here you can really see it it's like it's stuck in the ice and then it sank clearly has it, it's been through battle and then here is the little area where you're, it kind of reminds me of like uh, where a submarine would go into Pretty neat. Unique. Very unique, I must say. Well, let me know what you thought in the comments below about these new DLC vehicles. Uh, and which one is your favorite? Uh, the Ford F750. Like I said, you know what? I think I'll enjoy that and use that truck more if uh, mods come out and uh, buff it a little bit. Because um, as it stands right now, I haven't uh, fully upgraded it yet. But when I do, maybe that'll change my opinion on the truck. But that's going to do it for this episode of SnowRunner. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you all next time. Take care.